So today I want to take a look at this A with Z spot welder. So I have been wanting to order one of these for quite some time. And spoiler alert, I also ordered some nickel strips <laughs> along with these. Kind of showing up here. I just realized that uh, I probably lost some on the way here. Let's open this up really quick here. And <laughs> there's another strip. They're probably going to be everywhere. Here's the spot welder. Here's the main thing I want to get my hands on. Yeah, they didn't put any packaging in that whatsoever. No bag for the little cheap box for the strips. So there we go. I'll get them up later. Yeah, still got some more in here. Yeah, they all up under the flaps and everything. Okay, so getting back to the spot welder. More than likely the 14KW version is just fine. But I did save up and I wanted to go ahead and get the 24 kw version because with 0 0.20 and thicker strips i have always come up short and the cheap spot welders have worked really really well for me with 0 0.10 and 0.15 so while saving up i did and get the one that i was fairly certain would go over the top so we take this out of the bag here we do see a xt60i so this is the orange and not the yellow xt60 connector here and it's our front display three buttons, our welding lead jacks, and also the jack for our foot pedal. Overall, very well built looking unit. This is gonna be our power supply. And this is gonna be low voltage, but probably pretty high current to charge up those super caps and yeah we're 6 volts and 15 amps there's our XT60i and here we're gonna have our leads that's some thick leads and we also have a little battery holder and some nickel strip that come with it we also have the little foot pedal some extra tips it's nice that it did come with a little foot pedal, but it is very, very light, very cheaply made, but it may work just fine. These leads are very impressive. This is the very flexible, fine copper. Um, actually, the insulation stops here. <laughs> we just have the spiral wrap over it. That's really not a bad idea, really, to be very flexible. I did think it would have a clear coating over it, but I guess just being a spot welder, momentary output, that probably is still very safe to do it that way but it's hard to describe just how beefy and solid these leads are nothing like anything on a spot welder i've seen before let's take a quick look at their nickel strip here that feels like about 0.15 let me get my calipers here and let's just double check yeah 0.15 i knew this didn't feel quite as thin as the 0.10 it felt more similar to my 0.15 that I use a lot. And these are the 0.20 that I ordered. And very reasonable for a 100 piece. Even though I probably didn't get all mine. But that's what happens with Amazon packaging a lot of times. I'm going to go ahead and connect the power supply so it can charge up. And I'll clean a lot of this stuff up. Just to show you here, the icon is showing that the capacitors are charging up. So not ready for use, but it'll let us know when it's charged. So I'm just going to set this to the side. Another quick look at the little foot switch. And we'll get a magnet and help get up these nickel strips. And that's all we had is that little latch right there keeping these from coming out with a little foam in there to keep them from moving a whole lot. It shows that we're full and that we are still charging. Let's go ahead and power this unit on now. And I'll try to let you see the screen here. To be honest, a little bit disappointing on the size of the font on this. It's not hard to see necessarily in person, but it is very hard to show you what the screen looks like without zooming straight into it. So if we look at the display of the spot welder, we can select our different items here. 
if we press this down arrow or the switch key they're calling it you got the on off key the switching key adjustment key our trigger interface and of course our spot welder pin connections our input goes over some of the display interface here if you're interested But we have our welding mode, auto or manual. So if we want it just to be a timed base, like trigger time here, or if we go to manual and that goes away, we'll use a foot switch trigger interface. Preheating. So I haven't tried this yet. It's just set for zero milliseconds, but we can go from zero to 10 milliseconds. And it says preheating is used to remove the oxidized layer from the welding material. So you could do a preheat before the weld. We have an intermittent, so this is also adjustable in milliseconds and can go from 1 to 20 milliseconds. So the spot welder start after a set time. That's going to be in between your, if you want to do multiple welds. And the gear, of course, being like our power setting of our output, you can use this in 0.1 increments and can go from 1.0 to 9.0. I think I said 9.9 .9 earlier, but it's actually 9.0. One thing to know about the setting here is pretty cool is you see how one of the numbers here is going to have a larger font than the other. So if you hold this down, it selects if you want the tens or the decimal point. So if you want the whole number or the decimal point selected, and then you can adjust it but you still use the same button to go up so it is easy to be on this mode and go up in point one increments hold it down go up in whole number increments like so hold it down like so then we have trigger time which is just a time before the weld if you use it in automatic mode as mentioned it's not available in manual mode and then number of continuous spot wells can be one to three if you want to hit it with continuous consecutive pulses we also have our settings you can barely tell it highlight I wish they did a little better being able to tell it is hard to see it I can probably see it a little better than it shows on video but, but settings now if you can see that this is highlighted Go down the settings highlights kind of like a bluish shadow it's not very evident if we hit it and go into there then we can do our system settings like our language we actually have to hit the uh, setting or gear here to index down this is how you would change your language if you accidentally get into that don't get off of it until you <laughs> toggle back through keep on hitting the the gear cog here what they call the adjustment key just keep holding that until you come around to the language that you prefer and then we can go down interval time of continuous spot welds welding sound screen brightness we can actually do the screen rotation which is neat if you want to lay it on its side yeah just like auto power off Restore factor defaults and return. And then we also have the welding experience. So I do find this kind of neat. This is giving you some pointers, some tips. So that's pretty neat. And we can either hold this button down to go to the main menu or we could have went over to main menu. So that's a little bit about how this interface works. And we'll do a little bit of testing with it and see how it does. We'll definitely use some of this 0.15 they sent with it since we have plenty of it. Probably going to use some of these 0.20 as well. Plug up our welding leads here.
very flexible. I do like the feel of these. This end does have the vinyl covering up about an inch and a half or two inches or so, and then just bare as mentioned. So factory was 1.0 on the gear or the output. Just gauging from past spot welders, 1.0 probably won't do much of anything. It actually popped pretty good, but it didn't quite stick or didn't stick well. So not surprising at one. Um, this will go all the way to 9.9, .9, I believe. Um, so we're on 1.0. So I'm probably going to go all the way to 3. I'm trying to get used to this interface. So, well, I went to 3.1 and didn't really mean to. So at 3.1, yeah, this is a high output spot welder, but uh, why not? We'll try it. Hopefully it'll really surprise me and way overdo it here. One way to find out. Man, that thing, <laughs> that thing does have some power. Wow. Overkill there for sure. I don't know if you can see it or not. It put two holes straight through it. Put the dots down on my silicone mat. Well, I really couldn't hope for any better than that to go from 1 to 3.1 to overpower that much. I'm going to get my little mica pad here so it don't mess up my silicone mat and I'll try to put some slow motion or still shots up here if the camera could pick them up. I don't have a great camera for slow motion but maybe we can pick up just how big that pop was. We definitely need to wear eye protection when doing these spot welders or any type of welding of any kind for sure. Well, I am super, super impressed. 24KW might be more than I'll ever need, but it's so awesome that at 3.1, it did that to the 0.15 and 0.20 strips together. So let's go back and let's change this down to 2.0. Then it'd be pretty cool if I can correlate the 0.20 being spot welded 2.0. Let's do the 0.20 to 0.20 here across the split like so. That's the second time I really wasn't ready for that. I'm going to need to increase the time on this more than likely. Um, I'm not used to a spot welder popping off quite that quick. I can change the trigger time. But I can also take this welding mode to manual instead of auto where it uses time. And now I can use my foot pedal. So I'll go ahead and connect up the little foot switch. Put this down on the floor and just see how well this works. Oh, that was like a dream. I wouldn't have thought the foot switch would make that much difference. I was able to hold and position exactly like I wanted, the pressure I wanted, alignment was good, and then I had complete control. I am totally shocked at how much better control that give me. I'm so used to the time based ones and they work well enough, but at 2.0, that did an amazing job. So, so let me get another one of these strips and I want to go across here again. That felt really, really solid. Oh yeah. I held down really, really hard on that one to see if it was any difference and both ways welded very, very well. No complaints with either one of those. I really, really like it. Super, super strong. I can't help it. I don't want to waste a strip. Let me at least do one more with the .15. To make sure 2.0 isn't too strong for the 0.15 and excellent I think that's just right so I'm probably going to use around 2.0 a lot for what I do and that's really awesome <laughs> this thing will be a sure enough bad boy at 9.0 on the gear or the power setting I can't help it before the video ends here I have to do a few more of these 0.20s I want to do one across here on the solid part, making one of my favorite shapes here, the cross. Man, that felt really, really solid. My tips are sticking, but I believe it's because of that first test I've done. I do need to clean my tips up. 
but wow, that's just awesome. Looks the same front and back. How awesome is that? Before we end the video, let's zoom in and just do one more here across the split. Now that I have gotten a little more familiar with it and got the foot control, just how good does this do here across the split? Gives me time to line it up here just like I want and bam. Bam. Awesome. I really, really like it. And I just wanted to spend a few minutes here doing the initial test on the spot welder. And you'll definitely be seeing this used on my bench a lot more in the future. As mentioned, I've been saving up for this for quite some time. I do a lot of battery repairs, and I started to do the 14KW version, the smaller version of this. It is a lot cheaper, and I believe it would have been just fine, honestly. Matter of fact, looking at a comment that was made in a video a while back, viewer at 2010 Stoof mentioned that he had a supercapacitor spot welder. This is on a video where I was talking about the cheap spot welder did okay, but I really kind of wanted one of these nicer ones. I had been saving up and wanting one, and he mentioned that he had one that was a lot cheaper than the one that I was talking about, which was this one, by the way, and... He mentioned it was the U.S. Solid 14KW. He said it was then less than $200 and it performed very well for him. So it's really good that he shared that. We can take his expertise and his experience in that as well. For example, I just pulled up a U.S. Solid 14.5KW and the 14.6KW A with Z like I have, but in the 14.6KW. And they really are similar in price and it looks like they have gone up or the U.S. Solid has gone up since if you were posted about what he paid for his, and yeah, you probably can't go wrong with either one. And I imagine the 14KW is going to be just fine for most things. I just didn't want to be disappointed after I saved up like $300. So I saved up over $400 and went ahead and got one that I knew would be big enough for probably anything in the future that I try to do with it. So, so I hope you found the video looking to this new spot welder helpful. If you did, please like, share, and and subscribe. So I'm going to have a link to this spot welder as well as many other things that I find helpful on my workbench down in the video description. Those links are affiliate links and any of those you click on help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and God bless.